How are you? I'm, I'm great, Tom. Thanks for having me. I don't know if we've met before. It's nice to meet you. No. Well, I, I, I listen to you over the airwaves almost every day. Right. But I, so I feel like I know you. And I've but, gone to a lot of your concerts, sweet. so I feel like I know you. It's, but It's great. Thanks for that, too. How are you feeling about this thing coming out? I, I'm feeling really, I'm really chuffed, actually. I feel good. Um, it's, it's very exciting. It's, uh, I've been describing myself as a reluctant solo artist. I mean, I... Uh, would love more than anything just to be back to my normal routine with the, with with the guys in the hip and and doing our thing. I mean, I spent my entire musical career with those guys, and we, we got into a very great lifestyle where we would write a record and record a record and tour a record and sit around for a bit and then repeat since 1989. And and sadly, I that that routine's been broken. You know, that that was something that crossed my mind because. At the end of that last concert in Kingston, obviously a lot of our thoughts in the country were with Gord Downey. You know, we were worried about him. And it only occurred to me recently that another way to look at that was you guys having your, having your final concert. What do, what do you remember about that name? Um, well, it was the culmination of uh, a very emotional tour for us. Um, that's, you know, it started long before the first show in Victoria. Um, but even when we got to the first show in Victoria, uh, we were still very unsure of Gort's health and whether we were actually going to be doing, be able to do this. And over the course of that tour, uh, I can honestly say that the power of the music, not from our perspective, but what it was doing to the audience and how emotionally they were engaged with us, Gord actually got stronger and better. Um, and, and so did we as a group to the point where we got to the last show and we didn't want the tour to end and and obviously we didn't want it to ever end period you know so it, it really just spoke to how cathartic the, the, that collective music experience is just you know as much for the, for the guys on the band as mm. it is for the audience you know we, we felt the emotion and it was a it was a really powerful experience for us what do you do the next day uh, laundry you know, yeah. sort of did that. But then um, it was amazing how, you know, Kingston being the last show was, was family and friends and, and, and people from all over the country, all over the, the North America came to visit, which was actually a relief because it, it wasn't for a little while after that last experience where you, you actually sat down and started thinking like, wow, that last wave goodbye was the last wave goodbye, you know. And, and uh, so it was a nice distraction. Otherwise, I think it would have been almost unbearable. I think that that it's so nice to see, you, and it's almost a little tough to talk to you because, you know, I, when Gord Downey died, when the the front person, the you know, the big part of your band died, we were all so worried about you, mm. all of you, you know, and we, we couldn't see you, you know. I mean, rightfully so, you 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 processed your grief in the right way, and you did what you had to do, and you saw the country, you know, flip over essentially. Yeah. But we were so we were so worried about you. Yeah. Well, thanks. We were we we continued to worry about ourselves, and we worry about Gord's family, and and uh, and yeah. But it's I, again, I find myself now. I mean, it, it's time. I mean, that pull, that that draw is 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 relentless. You know, you I, I know Gord literally right after almost a month after we finished the tour, he got right into Secret Path and mounting what I consider just to be an amazing legacy project for him and 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 for his family and and for the country um and that's a great example to follow you know and an ending is an opportunity to 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 reframe and 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 begin anew and um you know Gord was always creative um throughout our career he was always pushing for a new tune let's let's write this let's perform this let's make a new record let's keep it going and um I, I think that's why I'm sitting here today, you know, to honor that inspiration. Yeah, I I went back to the first hip hip record, '89, I think. Yeah, yeah. You got a lot of songs on that record. Yeah, you yeah. know, and a lot of songs that you wrote. Oh, you're the only credited artist on. Yeah, well, that's that's the funny thing. It's very much like a lot of bands. You know, you we we started off as a cover band, playing R and B tunes and B sides of Stones things and things that people didn't know very well and got our chops up enough that and and I I was writing a bit and Rob was writing a bit and I was like well here I've got a tune we should try this and and here's another song and then you kind of realize like wow we're now we're an original band and it's dangerous we, yeah dangerous <laughs> and and so we we got the chance to tour across the country on that first record which was 
an amazing experience for us. And um, and we actually got continued to get better and better. You know, the nature of live performance, particularly in this country. You know, you're driving 10, 12 hours in between shows, and then in our case, you're playing in front of 10, 15 people every night. And you can either pack it in or you learn to dig deep. And, and we did, and we were writing while we were traveling and got up enough material to, to record um, up to here. Anyway, long story short, we found as a group that we sort of threw off the idea of here's my song, let's do it. Here's your song, let's do it. It's like, let's write together. Like, let's write during sound checks. And Gord would put the lyrics on top of jams and we would try them out live. And that's really how the Tragically Hip evolved as a, as a collective unit. But with, but, with, but with Gord Downey as the lyricist. Very much so. Gord, Gord was writing lyrics very early on, um, but he was so good at it and, and, and so serious about it um, and so prolific that it was, it was just such a... He, he came to us about 1992, um, just before fully completely, and, and asked, you know, I want to be the, you know, I'm going to be, I want to be the principal lyricist because to convey what he was writing authentically, it had to be his words. You didn't mind? Not in the slightest because at that point we were like, here's an idea, here's an idea, here's yeah. an idea. And it was just the most efficient and the funnest way to do it. Um, and it, it actually enabled all of us who were writing music, you didn't have to worry about writing a bridge anymore, writing a course, or even finishing a song. You could just throw an idea and collectively we would write a song together. Gord would start singing something that would suggest this change and Johnny would play this and and that's how the Tragically Hip kind of came to be. Like writing a song and saying, here I want you to, I want you to sing this Gord and you play the drums like this John, that wouldn't have washed. We never would have became what we became. Yeah, you were a band. We were a band, yeah. You are a band. Are a band, yeah. So tell me about the moment where you decide you know what, I think I'm going to pick this stuff back up. I'm going to start writing songs again. I'm going to start recording some songs again. Yeah, I had, uh, after we that, that, that last show in Kingston, um, I had a couple projects that I was working on. Um, I was produced a record for Emily Fennell that required a little bit of writing. And, and a buddy of mine, it's a long story, anyway, he was up in the, the space station, and I, he wanted me to write a song with him. Oh, of so course. I, I mean, that, that happens to all of us. It's just the weird things that you fall into. <laughs> Drew, Drew Feistel, an amazing guy. That's a different show. He, he was up on the space station, you were writing him songs? Yeah, yeah. He, he was up there briefly. Yeah, he wanted, he, he was the commander of the space station, and he wanted, uh, before he left, he wanted his last statement to be an artistic statement about circling the planet. And about how this is our only, this is our spaceship, this is our only vessel, and that's the. He's a brilliant scientist, but he will maintain that that, that the memories that he took from living up there was looking back right. at our home, right. which was profound, and it was very easy for me to write. So, yeah, of course. Anyway, so I, w I was writing, and it really wasn't until about a year ago this time, um, Gord had passed, and our original road manager Dave Powell, who was our our sixth guy in our band when we left university to head out on that first tour, he died a year ago at Christmas. And um, I had been blocked up about musically and creatively kind of articulating what my feelings were with losing Gord. And then the, a song called In the Next Life just sort of came fairly quickly, you know, and about, it's about those two guys and about, you know, in a larger sense about, you know, our, our youth leaving us, you know. And the necessity of, of moving on and recognizing that this is mortality, this is what we all have to deal with. And, and um, you can't sit and wallow, you can grieve, but you have to replace that pain with the love that you remember, you know? And that's what I tried to articulate in my own way. Can you play a little bit of it, Sam? With the freeze on, see Gord Sinclair with a song in the next life from his brand new album, Taxi Dancers, which is out everywhere on Friday. You might know Gord from his band, The Tragically Hip. He's here with me now on cue. 
how did you feel after you wrote it? You're smiling there now, which is a good sign. Yeah, I I, I, I felt good after I wrote it because it's, it's working with the hip for as long as I, I did um, and working with Gord as a lyricist for as long as I did. You know, it was a, the bar was set pretty high. Like, I, I couldn't sit down and write, you know, yummy, 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 I've got love in my tummy and, <laughs> and be happy with it, you know? Um, and, and here was an instance where I actually, you know, I, I, I smile because I, I remember Dave and I remember Gord and, and I remember circumstances that I think I tried to reflect artistically, you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out, you know. Sometimes it's easier for a guy like me to express myself emotionally with music as opposed to with words, you know, um, and maybe that's something I learned along the way, you know. Yeah, it can be therapeutic, hey, when you go through a loss. Yeah, very much so. It's a great, it's a great vehicle, and I'm, I, I mean, I've done a number of records with other artists over the years, and and you know, when when a relation, a romantic relationship ends, I always encourage the guys I write with it. Oh, you got to get start writing a couple songs. It's a, it's now's the time. You know, how are you feeling about getting back out on the road? And... Uh, I'm I, again, I'm the reluctant solo artist. I mean, I, there's a there's a reason that I'm the bass player and and spent my career standing beside Johnny playing the drums and watching Gord's bum, you know. It's just, it's not necessarily my, my personality type, but uh, again, it goes back to what I said about when he took over the helm of writing the lyrics. You have to, you know, to, to give it an aura of authenticity, you have, to, you have to sing your own words. And Paul Langlois from the group really pushed me to do this, you know. Don't, you know, sing it. Well, you, you, know, you gave him a call and told him you were doing some yeah, stuff? Yeah, I told him I was doing it and, and, you know, that I wasn't sure about doing the singing part, and he was like, no, you got to do it. You have to do it. And, and I've said a couple of times, and it's been quoted a couple of times, but it's really quite true. I, I keep thinking about flamenco, our song, and, and Gord, you know, walk like a matador, don't be a chicken. And that's really kind of what it comes down to. It's just like, and, and again, inspired by the guys and, and a guy like him, you know, use it up, use it all up. Don't leave a thing for later, you know. You really did. I really love listening to the record. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. It's very, it's very cool to hear it. And it's a bit surprising because we had Rob in um, from your band, from Rob Baker, you know, from the Tragically Hip Band. He was in playing with Justin Rutledge. And if there's one thing I got from talking to that guy, in addition to him being wicked. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he is a wicked man. He's a wicked man. <laughs> was that I said to him, I, I hinted at him. I said, so, you know, you're, gonna, you're getting back on the road there? And he went, oh, God, no, no, no. He said, I spent enough time on the highways of Canada. I'm going to stay home. And I would have thought you'd all feel a bit like that. Yeah. There, there is that for sure. But it is also, that is the great thing about this country. There's a, there's a draw to it. Um, it's something that mu our Canadian musicians have in common. It's like a knowing wink. It's the same thing, I think, with, with stand-up comedians. This is a very difficult country to make a living at as a, as a live performer. And you have to invest your, all your energy and, and all your soul into making that drive for the first time from North Bay to Kenora, mm -hmm. you know, and if, if the band doesn't break up mm -hmm. by the time you get to Winnipeg because of the stinky feet and, mm -hmm. and whatnot, then, then you're on to the next step. More you bands know? have broken up on the drive from Toronto to Winnipeg Absolutely. than any other stretch of highway in North America. I'm convinced of it. It's so true. And I think the, the, the offshoot of that, what comes out the other side is that that's why there's so many great performers that come out of Canada and so many great road crew uh, people are Canadian, you know, because they know how to travel. They've seen that country, you know, the, you know, there's not a musician in this country that doesn't have a story about being snowed in on the rock or you know, playing a show in front of two people on a Tuesday night and in, in, you, you pick the town. Perry Sound. Or, yeah, Red yeah. Deer, Alberta. Yeah, yeah. But there's also that common bond of stopping in the middle of the prairies and seeing the, the northern lights for the first time. Or the fact that everywhere you go in this country, despite the fact that it's so vast, you're met with friends and, and, and people that are engaged with you and they appreciate what you're doing. The great thing about the winter tour, which I'm about to embark on, you know, you get to a, a city where people don't come in the winter time, and people appreciate it. You know, and they love you for it, and then they remember you for it. You know, and it's a this is a great country we got going in, and we got a lot of great artists. And I always think about, I mean, I was lucky. I was in a band with five of my best friends, but I think about a stand-up comedian that has to make that 14-hour drive, and then okay, 
go be funny. Those, mm-hmm. those three guys out there are waiting and for you. And get back in the van. And get back in the van and do it all over <laughs> or again. Or the car. So, so I've got nothing to complain about. I think, I think in addition to the gratitude that you're going to experience from people, you know, going to Red Deer in the middle of the wintertime, <laughs> you're also going to get to, I think, take in and maybe... Have you done any shows yet? Have you done? No, we're going to start tomorrow night, actually. So I, th- I think that you're going to, I don't know if you're going to be surprised, but perhaps overwhelmed just by the, the way I feel, which is that, again, we were, we were all thinking about you, and you became symbols to all of us yeah. at that moment. I mean, half the God country watched you. I think you're going to be a bit overwhelmed by just people's gratitude and just seeing you at all. Uh, well, it's kind of you to say, I, I, I hope that's the case. It'll be, it'll be awkward for me, a little an emotional, I'm quite sure, because this is really, I, 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 I've jumped up with the guys in the trues quite a bit, and that's why I'm very happy to be playing with them, um, and my buddy James McKendie, these guys I know and love uh, beyond my guys in, in my group, but this will be the first time I've really done a lot of playing without the guys in the hip, you know, and I miss them every day, you know, I, I talk, to the, talk to Johnny and Robbie and Paul and a lot, but uh, yeah. I miss the other guy a lot. I heard that before Gord died, he I, was, I just read this in the Globe this morning, that before Gord died, he said, "Hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to pass on. I don't want this train to stop. I want, you know, find find someone to replace me." I can't believe he said it. Yeah, he well, that would have been a function of a, a couple different musings. You know, it's different times. He he and he and Paul, I know, talked, um, and that's not something that we ever really entertained as a band. Yeah. You know, we we, we would never really would, and I guess the context of that really is that. I, I will never say never to, to doing an, anything with the guys. And, and Gord left a, an amazing charitable legacy. And if, there, if in that context, if there was something that would come up that required us to do something, then, then I'm sure that collectively we would consider it. But the, you know, the, everyone in the in the group, there's there's four of us now, so it's hard to get quorum on anything. <laughs> 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 you know, so there's a so, you know there's some guys. Are maybe less comfortable about it than others, you know. Um, and uh, but again, it would depend on the circumstances and stuff like that. What I do know is that I I I know I watched people on that last tour and these great big giant burly guys putting their arms around each other when we play a song like Bob Cage and you know I love you man, you know, and they mean it, you know. And it's that's the power of music. It's the power of what. Um, Gord's lyrics and and the music that we came up with together and uh, yeah that's never going to go anywhere I don't think I hope I was in Milwaukee Wisconsin playing a festival doing a gig for an Irish festival in Milwaukee and I was backstage and I said to the guy who's run the promoter and I said listen I need you to get me a, I need you to get me some Wi-Fi or a laptop and he said why and I said because our set is over at eight or seven or something like that because it was like, you know an afternoon kind of like festival. And there's a band from Canada that's doing their last ever show. Can you please? And he said, sure. And he got us off a of backstage. Canadians are in the room sign went up. We took our laptop and put it in our big, I play Irish music, so our big frame drum. Cool. We yeah, put yeah. it in there so it would resonate out a little bit more. And we sat in there and we bawled like youngsters. Wow. It was such a beautiful moment. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who had an experience like that, where I felt closer to the people around me. Yeah. I, I, and I think that's great. And I think that speaks to the power of music and and. Uh, and I guess very kindly, we became the object of that for a bit. We, we, we have a great country here, and, and there are lots of things that unite us as a country beyond the, beyond the tragically hip and, and, and donuts and whatnot, you know. Um, and it's amazing, the number of stories that, that people have shared with me, um, that's a particularly good one. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I like using the, the Vodron as, as an amplifier, it's pretty cool. But yeah, it, it, it's pretty amazing, and it's, it, it's nice, to, nice to feel loved. It's a lovely record. Before you go, can you tell me what Taxi Dancers means? Yeah, it's just an old, it, it's, a, it's a very old phrase, a, a, an old, I don't know. Anyway, back in the Dust Bowl days, you know, these rural communities, uh, you know, they would have Saturday socials a couple times a year, and, and invariably there were not enough dance partners for the, the guys that were working the farms, the farmhands and stuff, and they would fill up taxi cabs from the, the nearest major center and the, the young ladies would, would travel out and it'd be like kind of a nickel a, a dance like type a, of like thing. Like a rent a goalie kind of thing. Rent a goalie type of thing. And and I always I always thought it was just this amazing metaphor for kind of what we do in this country as as you know performers. We wheel into town and dance around for a bit and then we we move on to the next gig, you know. And uh, uh, 
we were throwing out album titles sitting around my place, and and uh, and I credit John Angus and his brother Colin with the, they they, they just thought it was cool and it was a it cool is, title. It and is it, a cool title. It, yeah. Are Thanks. you going to do any hip songs at the at your shows? Yeah, yeah, we're going to do some hip songs for sure. Um, That's going to be wild for you to sing them, I suppose. Yeah, I'm going to sing a. F- yeah, uh, it's it's fun. There's a few that I can do, and there's there's a few that that mean a lot to me, and that I, that I'd like to sing. So any any, I, any I'd know. Oh, there's we'll have to find out, won't we? You have to find out. Oh, that's, that's a taxi fair. dancer right there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not doing this for my health, Tom. <laughs> nice to talk to you, man. Nice to talk to you, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, it was a pleasure.